And we're back here on Inside the Ropes, and we are joined by the black heart of NXT himself, the one and only Tommaso Ciampa. How are you doing? I am very well, man. Thank you for having me. Well, I, listen, I've got to ask you straight off the bat. Take over in your house this Sunday, June 7th. As a long-time WWE fan, I'm sure lots of us are feeling this way, we are praying for the inside, in your, in your house, house set. Do you have yeah, any right. information? Can you give us any scoops? Should we get our hopes up? I think it is fair to get your hopes up. Uh, I have my hopes up, and uh, it was the first question I asked, to be honest with you. I said, is, is there any chance? The, the one thing I'm hoping on top of that is that we see a Todd Pettengill sighting somehow. Uh, I don't know on that one. That's just fingers crossed. I have no idea. Uh, but, yeah, I, I've, I've heard that it's promising on the set. Uh, I don't know if that means it's the old set or just a, a renewed version of it. Um, but – I know that everybody understands how excited uh, the fan base is for In Your House. And for some, it's one of those weird ones, right? For some reason, it just stuck with all of us. So, yeah, I yeah. think that everyone's going to be pretty happy with what's produced. And Todd Pettengill did come back and do the In Your House DVD. So there is a chance that Todd oh, could, there you go. Todd could maybe, if we can convince him to make the trip. Um, well, listen, you've got one of the most interesting matches at TakeOver In Your House with Carrie and Cross. And he came into NXT with so much buzz. I just kind of wanted to get your take on when did you kind of first hear about him? Were you aware of the buzz when he came in? And how do you feel about you being his first program? Because he's been flung in at the deep end with you. Yeah, I, I first heard about him only a couple months probably before he uh, arrived. Uh, and it was mainly from fans. And it was just simple buzz of wanting to see a matchup between the two of us. So uh, that, that's the first I heard just because I kind of do stay in my bubble for the most part. And then when he arrived, um, I, I, mean, I think I saw his entrance for the first time with the masses and it blew me away. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, he's a big guy. He's got a great look. He's got, I, I, I understand the hype. I really do. And having the first program be with the two of us, I mean, it, it makes sense to me in a lot of ways. Like, you know, he reminds me a bit of, you know, when Alice Black arrived with the, it's just, there's a lot of hype there. There's a lot of, uh, I, I don't know. It's just, the, the, there's the whole package. So for a guy like Harry Cross to set his sights right at the top of the card and want to get right into a big program and make a name for himself and make an impact, I, I, I fully get it. And it makes sense that the two of us got paired together just because, I think for the fans, it's, it's one of those matchups that uh, they, just, they just wanted to see. And um, we, we should also talk about your, your program with Johnny Gargano from earlier on this year. And um, what I wanted to ask you about was, obviously you and Johnny had this big history in DIY. Uh, you had turned on him. You were the big villain. He was the valiant good guy. And then the roles were reversed this year at TakeOver Portland when he turned on you. What was it like sort of changing the dynamics of you guys being against each other? And I mean, obviously with that and the backdrop of everything that was happening in the world, you were thrust into a cinematic match as well. Talk about just kind of flipping that switch. It feels like the the feud started very 80s where it was good versus bad and it was pretty clean cut, uh, which I, it's just, I love that style of pro wrestling. It's what I grew up on and I, I had a blast doing it. And then it feels like the back half of our feud became more uh, current day where it's not as clean cut uh, where good and evil it's like, it's almost like it's just, it's just people who have good qualities and bad qualities and what are we focusing on at the time uh so it, it became just uh like very I, I i wish that that last match was in front of a crowd because i wish i could have heard who they were behind you know what i'm saying i, I think that it would have been a split crowd whereas that first matchup in new orleans it was pretty clear you know, they, they were booing me. They were cheering him. Yeah. So it just it just made it. I don't. It made it more feel more and more like uh, real life, like a like a movie and stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that I would have changed anything, but I do wish we had a crowd for that last one, just because it would have been a cool atmosphere. I mean, you're you're only you guys are only one of a handful of matches that have had the kind of the cinematic treatment. And yeah. I kind of wondered when we go back to to normal, you know, or whatever the normal is going to be. You, do you think that cinematic style matches are something that we should we should keep now and then? Is that something that should kind of come with us back into normality? It feels like they'll have their place. I feel like they've always had a 
place to some degree, just not to this extent. Like, I mean, like, even when I think back to, like, the Boiler Room match or, like, uh, with Rock and, and Foley when they had that empty arena matchup. And it, it's, it's just, I think now they're just highlighted a, a bit more. And I feel like it, it won't hurt if, uh, you know, every so often we saw one on a pay-per-view or something. I don't mm-hmm. think they should be something that's thrown into every card. Because then they, they lose that unique special feel to them. But, like, a, a, somebody like an Undertaker character or a, a the Fiend, or even if, if uh, Finn Balor was to come back as the demon, like there's certain people that it fits. Like Carrying Cross is a guy who it, it would fit him and serve him well going forward if you just you know splashed it in every so often. Well, yeah, something that I thought was interesting was uh, I did an interview with Edge about a year ago, and he had talked about you and when you were a villain that like you know he saw a lot of himself in you, and I kind of wonder you know were you able to pick his brain because I mean you guys are were very similar that when you were villains it was not cool it was just you were there to be hated. Yeah, uh, Edge was like kind of in my back pocket the whole time. Uh, I would, I don't know when exactly it started. Uh, it's hard for me to say. I feel like it was sometime after New Orleans, but I'm not sure exactly when. But it was he came down to the performance center, uh, and we got chatting then, and he kind of just put it out to a, a bunch of us that hey, if you guys wanted to, you know, throw ideas by me or whatever, I think he gave his phone number or his email or whatever it was. And I just took him up on it. And I started to just send him. I feel like it was shortly after winning the title. I started to just, if I had a, a big match coming up, takeover or whatever, I would send him kind of my, my thought process, my outline. And I just say, hey, am I missing anything? Are there any holes in this? Is there anything that you would, you know, embellish on or that you would, you know, stay away from? And he kind of just became my sounding board as far as, prepping to go into to matches and just a, a lot of it was exactly what you just said it was how, how do I make sure I get booed and I don't have any redeeming qualities and yeah he was he was awesome for that so he's got a great great mind like I, I would love it if he became somebody like who took on a role like Shawn Michaels has in NXT uh, because he's just he's so awesome to learn from I mean, I guess if Edge is back, then I need to ask the question, do we think that Edge and Tommaso Ciampa is something that could happen? Because it feels like when you look at all the guys he could face, you're on that list of somebody people would want to see. Yeah, anything could happen. I mean, he, I, I saw that he, he had a list, uh, not, maybe not quite like Cody Rhodes' list that he tweeted out. <laughs> that, but he's, he's name-dropped people in interviews, he's, you know, and I've heard my name brought up quite a few times. I mean – Obviously, I would love it. It's, it's, there's no question there. I think the, like, it's just the, the timing of it and having it make, make sense. Uh, and we have back off of, well, obviously, both neck injuries and having an off-camera relationship and stuff. So it's just making sure we get the most out of it, I think, because, uh, you know, I know that he's on a limited schedule and I know going through the surgery and stuff that you, you want to be smart with your matchups and your bumps going forward. So for both of us, I just think it'd be like, how do we get the most out of this? And what stage is that on? And what's the story? And like, I mean, I'm watching how him and Randy started to tell their stuff. It's both of us are very into story and something that people can sink their teeth in. So I, I think it's, it's definitely possible. I definitely would love it to happen. I mean, for me, it's, I get to get in there with one of the guys that I've looked up to for many, many years. So Hopefully, and you know, fingers crossed, it happens on a takeover, just because that's like it's kind of my home at this point, and it'd be really cool to see a guy like him step out on that stage because it only helps the product at that point. And you know, you you've been very vocal about after the surgery that you had, like you're not you you can't do 250 days a year. You have to kind of be smarter about the dates that you do. And you've been in NXT the whole time. And I know you said maybe the main roster is not somewhere where you would be going because you couldn't do that schedule. Where do you sit on that now? And is that something that you think could change? Or, I mean, because you are at this point kind of Mr. NXT in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm, I'm a year and a half out of surgery now. So it, I, I feel my stance getting slightly more laid back on it. But it's one of those things where, like, I don't want to get – too comfortable with oh my neck feels great because I all like I just know it oh yeah you're one mistake away you're one bump away from it not feeling great right now I feel great I mean I've, I've been on a limited schedule even I mean I came back it's such a slow progressive pace of live events and stuff and then when I started to hit a lot of live events 
knock on wood, I felt pretty good. Right now, I feel great. Uh, but again, I, I just haven't taken on a very hard load. So I, I try not to fool myself. I, you know, I, it, it's one of those things like, hey, I probably can't do 250 dates a year. Wait, but I feel great doing this many dates. But would I feel great if I did 250? I probably not. And honestly, a lot of it has to do with travel too. The travel is the hardest part sometimes for me is if I have a long travel and then I have to warm up for a match and get on a bus or a car or on a flight, that part is very difficult, that cool down and, and then repeat process. So I, I think as far as like a main roster run or anything goes, to me, it's just one of those things like if somebody came to me with the right offer of saying, we're going to limit your schedule, anything's possible because it has nothing to do with the brand or anything. I mean, we're all part of WWE. It's just, it's literally just for me, the longevity of my career. And I, I want like legacy is very important to me at this stage. And I, the longer I can do this and the more matches I can have that are meaningful and on a big platform, the better. So I would rather have as many of those for as long as I can uh, if possible. I mean, do you look at like WrestleMania that this year and see that you know the NXT women's title was online at WrestleMania? So yeah. maybe there's still a way for you you to have you be on WrestleMania and be in NXT. Like the world is opening up more and more in WWE every year. Yeah, I mean, when I held that NXT title, it was it was one of the top goals on my list was to defend it on WrestleMania, uh, and it obviously it just didn't happen. Uh, but it was it to me. It's just be, it, it's simply it knowing how many eyeballs were going to be on that and representing the brand uh, and doing it on such a major platform like that. Uh, and shoot, man, and Rhea's and Charlotte, that was my favorite match at WrestleMania this year. I thought it was incredible. So hats off to them. They did, they did it justice. Uh, it is something I, even going forward, it would be a dream come true for me to have or going for that NXT title on the WrestleMania stage. Uh, just as much as I'm, I've said numerous times, like I would also love for NXT TakeOver to get so big that we filled up some sort of, you know, huge football field arena type of thing. Like, so I, I just, I think I just have a ton of goals and all of them are pretty big and hefty at this point. So it's good to have. One thing I noticed about you that I thought was really interesting is you see a lot of times in wrestling where there's a, a, you know, a bad guy and he gets so bad that eventually people cheer him and then when he becomes a good guy, people kind of turn on him. Whereas when you became cheered and a good guy, like people, people still love you. You kind of retained a lot of the characteristics that you had but were able to flip that into be more of a fan favorite. How, what was your process in that? Because a lot of times that can maybe fail, but you've made it really work. Well, I, I think real life just kind of assisted me, like uh, having the neck injury and then having it become public and then having the documentary follow me around. And in the process of it all, like I went from a villain who really kept the curtain closed on the fans. And I, I played simply Tommaso Ciampa at all times on social media and stuff. And then suddenly it was like, oh, hey, he's got a wife and a kid and like, his career almost ended. Like once you kind of, I think real life just kind of intercepted and did the work for me. Cause when I came back and Edge was a big factor there too, returning, I remember asking him like, if he had any advice and his biggest piece of advice is you don't change a thing. He's like, you can evolve. He's like, but the second you walk out the curtain for the first time, the person that they remember and the person that they miss, you got to give them that person. Don't give them the new version of that person. And I really held that, like close to my heart for a while, for months. I mean, even to this day, I don't think I've changed all that much, like you said. Um, but it was one of those things, like, sometimes as a performer, when you're told, hey, now you're going to be a fan favorite, your natural instinct is that, oh, I better smile more, and I better, you know, be kinder and, and let the people in more. And I kind of had to fight all those instincts and just be like, no, no, no. You're going to walk at the same cadence, talk at the same pace, do everything the same way. Uh, even the stuff I did with Adam Cole and Era, I didn't really do a whole lot that would be like, like John Cena, good guy hero. It was mm -hmm. you know, still kind of a jerk. Um, I just I have that fortunate relationship. Again, it's the NXT fan base too. Like that's that fortunate. They've been along for the journey. Then they got a glimpse of the behind the scenes of the journey. And I think it's just one of those things where we just have a 
like a relationship at this point, you know, and, and it's some sort of like, it's a bond between me and the fans. It's, so it's pretty organic. It's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just kind of going with my gut instinct at this point. And just one last question I want to ask you is obviously NXT has been on Wednesday nights for years and years and years. You guys have made that your night. And, you know, now there's other pro wrestling on Wednesday nights. What is it about NXT that you think people love so much? What sets NXT apart? Because like you say, there is that fan base and there's that kind of NXT is the cool thing. What is it about NXT on Wednesday nights that you think keeps that fan base? Well, I think what helped the brand grow at such a fast pace was like this hybrid style meeting like i feel like it's that the hybrid of the the what we give in ring wise being just crazy athleticism really good matches some some of them longer than others and just it's it's super competitive but then it also at least for me it was like it, it really catered to the kid who grew up in like, like late 80s early 90s of three to four pay-per-views that are massive and they all have slow builds and stories and stuff that you can just really get behind. So that I think is what we do best is, is storytelling. Like I think it, the NXT brand grew based on the fact that we just had really good characters that you could sink your teeth into, get behind, who had issues that felt real. Like, you know, whether it was myself and Johnny, or if you go back to like Sami Zayn and, and Kevin Owens, it was just, there's always been like Samoa Joe and, and demon like there's always just been stuff going on that fans can really get behind that wasn't like a like a blink your eyes and it's over like you you could watch it sit along and build with it for two three four five six months so that to me is the, the coolest part and now that we're weekly you know on bt sport and on usa here it's just a matter of trying to find i think we're all trying to find where where it fits in now to a weekly two-hour show and to continue telling slower stories and letting things develop over time listen you're doing a great job i wish you all the all the luck in the world on sunday take over in your house 2020 in your house i'm so happy about it you can see it on the the wb network hopefully todd pettengill is there if he's not don't blame to master champa for getting your hopes up uh, listen best luck man and thank you for taking the time thank you dude appreciate it